Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I am Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, the show's topic is Curious Creatures. And I'm not sure if the curious creatures are the humans or our special guests, but we will get to that in a moment. First, I want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to give us a call, feel free to give us a call at 781 270 nine one nine nine or if you think of a question afterwards or a uh, suggestion for a future topic you can always email me at talk at bcattv.org now as I mentioned we have a lot of curiosities around here and mostly tonight is my the crew for this evening we have a full house tonight I would like to start by thanking Corey McNeil and Kyle Ruffin, who are staff members here at BCAT. And without them, this place wouldn't really be running and I wouldn't be here. So thank you, Corey, and thank you, Kyle. We also have several volunteers here this evening. First of all, we have Colleen Moore, director extraordinaire, who's making sure that everything goes off without a hitch. So thank you, Colleen. And now I'm gonna have to cheat and look at my notes because we have Tatiana Hawkins, Maddie Shipka, Emily Campania, sorry Emily, and Mike Shipka. And the reason why we have several volunteers is we have several guests. But before, one, one more thank you, I want to thank my husband Paul for staying home for Daddy Date Night. And Gwyneth, you're really going to have to pay attention to this show when it rebroadcasts when it's not your bedtime. So anyway, enough of the formalities. I would like to introduce our wonderful guest this evening, Dean Kosh from Curious Creatures. And he has a menagerie for us this evening. I have, I'm sorry, I already forgot my little buddy's name here. That's Peanut. Peanut is a lovely skunk who's taking a nap on my lap. And we have a lovely little hedgehog here called, his name should be Spike. Yeah. What's Sonic. Sonic, of course. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Original. And, of course, Dean, our wonderful parent to all of these lovely creatures. Thank you. So before we actually meet everyone, can you first tell me a little bit about how you came into sure. finding all of these guys and what led you to found uh, Curious Creatures? <laughs> well, in the beginning, though. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love animals, like uh, like a lot of people, like most everybody. And, and the crazy uh, cat lady was already taken. No. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I um, I got a job in a, a pet store. Okay. While I was going to a community college, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it started. Uh, the owner uh, was closing up, so I kind of took over the store, and uh, one day. Uh, there was a school in town and they asked if I could bring the animals and show the kids and mm -hmm. I did and it, we had a great time. How could you not? These are and awesome. uh, yeah, I packed up a bunch of animals and uh, the phone started ringing. So next thing you know, I was doing more shows cool. than uh, selling animals at the pet store. So I went from selling the pets to taking in unwanted pets. Okay. And we uh, take them in, we share them. We find homes for them. So when you say unwanted, that... They need a home. They need a home, but yeah. they're not necessarily like injured wild no, animals. No, so, some have uh, issues, you okay. know, uh, that you could have uh, a lot of nutritional issues, you know, okay. raising. Well, yeah, if you have a pet alligator, it's kind yeah. of hard to keep them fed. Or, or raising a, an animal from a baby, uh -huh. you know, to an adult, it happens so fast that if their, their calcium is off or... Mm -hmm other vitamins you know you have to have provide a great you know the best environment you can oh, okay. with artificial sunlight and the proper temperature humidity we do all that yeah yeah, yeah. so so these aren't like wild animals that you rescued so you they no. can't be re-released exactly these are uh, my specialty is uh, pets pets okay. yeah exotic pets. exotic pets exotic and unusual because there aren't any dogs or cats but in I have here. dogs and I have a cat well, yeah, yeah, I like dogs. <laughs> I think dogs make the best pets. They That's do. what I tell they people. They are good. Yeah. But you can love other ones. Yeah, and you can't exactly put a hedgehog on a leash. And people love fish. Is he like sneezing? He's or is he just like kind of like... trying to spike me a little. Okay. See, I, I can handle it without gloves. It's, it's not, um, you know, so this animal in the wild, uh -huh. 
would get eaten by a hungry predator because how? Well, they would just work at it till they got <laughs> okay. them, you know. Okay. So what these hedgehogs do is I'm not sure. I think this is the right way up. I think so. Yep. When they're out looking for bugs at night, they come across uh, venomous toads, mm. and they'll catch a toad, and the toad will release all its toxins come out of its skin, and uh, the hedgehog will rub the toad all over its spikes, getting the poison. Now, does that like kill? Uh, is this toad now dead? Probably, yeah. Uh, okay. Probably, yeah. Like after yeah. meeting, you know, Spike over here. Sorry, hot S Sonic. Yeah. I you like said Sonic is albino. I actually like Snowball. Snowball. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, I a, wouldn't want to throw that Snowball, though. No, that would hurt. That would Yeah. Be. So um, I'm going to put Sonic. I know you love this one. It's like your favorite. Where's is it right down here? This. Just right down here? Okay. So, so now you rescue animals that yes. don't have happy homes anymore, and you give them a happy home, and you take them we out and teach people about, are you sure you want to get this as a pet? Yeah. Uh, a, big, a big part of our business is uh, doing the off-road programs. Okay. We, we, can you explain what that is? We uh, pack up um, about 12 different animals, okay. and then we uh, bring them to a preschool, a kindergarten, elementary, mm -hmm. high school. College, okay. college, nursing homes, oh, okay, hospitals, libraries. Yeah, I can see how how um, peanut over here would make a great, you know, stress reducer. Yes, yes. Sit here and, and everybody, you know, I see him every day. But for a lot of people, it's a real treat to. I'm like forgetting this is a skunk on my lap. I keep thinking it's just like a little cat. Yeah, and then. The skunk goes home. A lot of people get animals because they love them and they want their kids to have an experience. Yeah. But you have to feed them and clean them and yeah. take care of them, and they're expensive. Yeah. And some are, you know, not that nice sometimes. And they probably, like you had mentioned, they probably need like a special diet because yes. you can't exactly go to Petco and you buy. You have to educate yourself on yeah. the animal's needs. Um, a lot of it's common sense, but a lot of it's it's tricky. You know, you. Uh, a lot of a lot of times, uh, like a skunk in the wild, they're eating insects. Mm -hmm. So how do you match that diet without feeding them all bugs? Yeah, you know. And um, so you read and you learn to find out what breeders and keepers and people are doing. And, okay. And uh, yeah. So you really don't do much with rehabilitation. You do more of. Education. Education of the community on. Yes, we uh, we are like an ambassador. Oh, okay. We we introduce people to animals so they can be educated, so they can respect and appreciate the animals. Mm. And a big thing. Animals are people too. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> um, if you don't know about an animal, yeah. you fear it because right. uh, you you may have heard a story or the scary movie. And a lot of people, that impression, you know, that, that stays with you. I bring them a positive experience. They can see me holding snakes. They can hold snakes. Nobody gets bit. I'm I, still asking you to keep the tarantula in the cage, right. though. Want me to take out a snake? Sure. The little ones? Is Peanut going to be okay with the snake? Yeah, oh, she's okay. okay. She might eat one if she got a chance. These are corn snakes. and um, We've seen these at the Stone Zoo. Oh, good. They've brought them out. It's the number one pet snake. Uh, they don't get much bigger than this. They never bite, and uh, they're rugged. A lot yeah. of uh, the tropical snakes, they need high humidities and temperature, and they, um, you know, like people and animals. The number one uh, problem, I think, um, is, is stress. You know, so these are pretty stress-free animals. Okay. They'll, they'll take handling. They're born in captivity. We feed them frozen mice. Ooh. Yeah. Now, if you were to get a pet snake, yeah. you know, um, a, couple, a few months ago, I had the House Rabbit Network come on the show, and they were saying that, you know, the rabbits sometimes like other rabbits to keep them company do you need oh like, really yeah um, do you need lots of snakes? a lot of people do they are like worried friends I think they're fine by themselves okay. uh, most animals do well by themselves okay. and in fact when you introduce another one 
well, yeah. there's competition there's sometimes. Issues. There's uh, you know, one will uh, dominate the other. Yeah, there's and, always the alpha. Yeah, and then you, uh, but then sometimes like birds love to be with another bird. Mm -hmm. If you get a bird and you can pair it up and you can be friends and with it. It also them. depends on your lifestyle too. Like if you had a cat and you worked full time, you might want to get a second cat to keep the first cat. Yeah. Or maybe you just yeah. don't get a pet. You know, That's true. get a goldfish. Yeah, yeah, get a fish or, or a not. snake, or just hire me to come and get your pet fix. You know, I <laughs> exactly. do that. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you got a bunch of corn snakes in there. Yes, I, I I brought a whole bunch. I just I, I think sometimes when Whoa. you yeah when you show people a bunch of snakes, Kyle, stay away. They don't know what's going on because it's the way they move. It's so uh, it's so Whoa. alien. There, get in there. That um. Now, do you have any like ever have any escapees where you have to like call nine one one? Oh, all the time. I don't call nine one one. You know. Yeah, animals get out. Uh, a, a lot of times, you know, people make mistakes, leave the cages open. No, that never. Happens. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Is that all sarcasm the time. in that statement? Yeah, let me uh, take out Squirrel here. What do your neighbors think of you? You know, they're okay because they were gonna they were gonna turn my property into a. A development, and they decided that uh, the snakes weren't so bad. Snake I guess so bad. <laughs> compared to. So this is Squirtle, yeah. Squirtle. And this is from Africa. It's from a lot the smoother than I thought. Yeah, this would live in the Sudan. It's the third largest species, and so many tortoises need rescue. They live a hundred years. We take tortoises all the time, because um, you know people are keeping them good, well, so yeah, they're living. But yeah, but you know, after a hundred years, I probably <laughs> won't be around. So I know. So people are I like know. leaving tortoises, you know, their property and their will. Now, is the shell made out of like keratin or the stuff that your fingers exactly. are made out of? The the shell is alive. Weird. The darker uh, it's rings. Alive? Yeah, it's growing from these uh, these cracks in the side. That's all live. Uh, growth. Wild. And see how you get the rings? Yeah. See every every it's like a tree? As it gets bigger it separates. At one time all these points were touching and oh, it was just wow. a little baby tortoise. And you know this tortoise eats just grass. She'll live outside all summer mm -hmm. and, and mow the lawn. Cool. They, but they gotta come in the winter man. Yeah. Oh it's so cold out there. Yeah she, now, she's 16 can years old. really turtles or tortoises What's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? Turtles can swim. Okay. And tortoises can't. Okay. I got some baby turtles here. These are local ones that we hatch because their nests always get destroyed. So we hatch them out, we raise them for a year, and then we let them go. This is the eastern painted turtle. Now, can they really suck themselves into their shell for protection? Or oh, yeah. It, They'll oh, pull okay. their, their head in. Their neck kind of coils up like an S inside, okay. and then they cover their face, Ooh, so the, okay. the those scales protect them. Can yeah. they touch his foot? Yeah, she doesn't bite. She, sorry. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. When I got her, she was the size of a baseball about 15 years ago. Okay, so. So she grows fast. Now, when she's born, is she about that size too? Yeah, she's about as big as this little one right wow. here. Wow, that's probably like an inch and a half. Yeah. In diameter? Yeah, the, the shells, the eggs look like uh, ping pong balls. I was telling you before yeah. the show that I actually lived in Florida and there was a wildlife reserve and I went to visit it once and a turtle had come out and was digging the hole and laying the eggs. I love that. And I'm like, nobody go near it, don't freak her out. Yeah, say, I know, I know, that's uh, you know. This one mom with like a six year old, go look at it. I'm like, come on, leave the poor it's woman so alone. Cool. She's giving birth right now. So let me, I'm going to take out the chinchilla. Okay. If the turtle doesn't run away. Well, I don't think he'll go very fast. I don't think he likes that stare. She likes the she, stare. She, I think she's going to do it though. You know, the tortoise. Probably not right Slow away. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, this is Charlie. Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Now you were telling me before the show chinchillas are endangered. They are on the endangered species list. And you can have one as a pet. Hmm. They live in the uh, steppe of the Andes in Peru. Okay. And um, when the babies are born, they're fully furred and can run around. 
and they only really? have two babies at a time. Okay. So the fur has what I've been told a million hairs per square inch. I believe it. This is like really, really soft. And uh, so they like it for a fur coat. And unfortunately, it can take between 100 and 200 chinchillas. Oh, the poor little guy. I'd rather have one as a pet. So they don't, yeah, they don't. Uh, come here, are you okay? Now, Charlie's got a little nick in his ear. Did he get in a, an argument with another you chinchilla? You know, or? it's a mystery. Um, we think maybe he was sticking his ears out through the cage and another one bit him. But the other one was bit too and it's oh, healed. Okay. Yeah, one day I came home and both of his ears were nicked and I was like, what happened to Charlie? Charlie, where are you going? And they, I think it was like, uh, you know, I have, I have 13 really chinchillas right now. Wow. And we get them all the time. We have them up for adoption. Now what do chinchillas eat? It's, it's like a bunny pellet, like a grass, oh, okay. you know. Uh, it's a little drier, I think, so oh, they have okay. a special, you know, uh, alfalfa pellet or whatever. Okay. And what is their life expectancy? 15 years, okay. so they live a long time. And all of these critters should pretty much remain indoors, right? Uh, yeah, well, the skunk I keep outside. Okay. And my bunny I keep does, outside. Do skunks hibernate? You know, I think they do because once like they run, real but squirrels don't. Squirrels are no, up. They're, they're all those That's squirrels. why they store all the nuts. Yeah. But the skunks, yeah. I, okay. I look at her. She's wiped out. See, all all a skunk wants to do is eat and sleep, and be left alone. Kind of like my cat. Exactly. Now, with skunks, I know I asked you this earlier, but I think you know other people might have the same question. In the winter time, does the skunk's coat change to become more white for camouflage sake, or is it just like a zebra pattern where it's, it's more it's like a zebra pattern, black and white, and what you see is sometimes what's their there? their fur will get yellow okay. if they've had a lot of protein in their diet, okay. and um, they they will shed like drop a lot of fur. Oh, okay. you know, like dogs kind of do. They go uh -huh. through like a, a shedding, and. Uh, but, you know, this skunk was born on a skunk farm in Iowa. Hmm. In some states, you can buy You're a skunk Iowa? in a pet store. So yeah. is Captain Kirk. Oh, that's awesome. He's favorite. <laughs> Love the captain. He's only pretending. And this though. is Sonny the bunny, yes. my sidekick. You know. Sonny looks pretty happy. Too. He is. This bunny from the time, I remember when he was born. And his whole life, he gets pet by so many kids. Oh, yeah. Like, he's out with me, and he's, he's being loved, and he's being held, and so he knows and we're not going to hurt really him. really wants to come out again. Yeah. See how the ears are up? Yeah. What's that means that? he's happy. He's happy. And if his ears are down, that's a nervous bunny. Oh, okay. And they stomp their feet to talk sometimes. They say, you know, this is mine. These well, two the are friends. Well, the cat said they used to stomp their feet oh. to, um, for, for warning. Yes. Or to mark their territory. Oh, okay. To say, you know, and these two are buddies. Oh, they, they are. They do the shows they together. They have the same eyes. They do. A rodent and a lagomorph. You know. What's a lagomorph? I've never heard of that before. Yeah, that's what they call bunnies. Okay. Now, um, hmm? cavies are guinea pigs. Uh, yes, cavies. Cavies, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you know, guinea pigs are from Ecuador. They They're from are. South America. Hmm. Up. Oh. There she goes. She figured <laughs> it out. My tortoise is running away. <laughs> Come here, get in there. I can get her. I think I can catch her. I don't she think takes she can go very far. All the doors are closed. I just don't want her. All right. If she's going to, we'll keep an eye on her. So you, she I take won't a, like chew cords or anything, will she? Okay, we can take out no, the tarantula she, just to look. All right, all right, tarantula time. Well, that's a scorpion. Oh, a scorpion, okay. That's People pretty cool. People keep scorpions as pets? Believe it or not, they do. And, You've got to um, be kidding. I learned. Can you get them unstinged? You can clip Remove their stinger, the but you don't have to. This species, Okay. you can train it. And I used to always clip them, and then they would die a couple months later, so I was like... I stopped trying to clip them, and it I would just hold looks them. Like a lobster. a lobster. Yes, they they began in the ocean. They found a fossil of a 14-foot sea scorpion. 
Wow. Yeah. It's actually a spider. It's a arachnid. Eight oh, yeah, legs. Eight legs. Okay. Two body parts. But it has the claws and then it has the venomous stinger. See? Okay. Now that stinger looks like it's almost almost detached. Yeah, but they, they can sting repeatedly and it hurts like a bee sting. But look, see? I can pick him up. I can hold him. You can pick him up. But he <laughs> he doesn't try to sting me anymore. Okay. He's furry. Yeah, those are like little whiskers for sense in their like sensory? their environments. Yeah. He can't climb out of there, can he? No, but I'll put the top on it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just No, you're about. doing great. Some people you know, the bug thing is a whole nother Yeah, the bug thing makes me a no whole nother kingdom of animals. And you know, the bugs are the most numerous species well, yeah, exactly. on the earth. They are. And oh. and and we Do we fear need to them. go rescue the turtle? I, yeah, let me get the turtle. Oh yeah, and leave the tarantula right here with Sorry. the cover off. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so uh almost made it. Be free, be free. I think she's gonna need a new uh travel log. Yeah, little crack. You go to Home Depot, <laughs> get a new box. <laughs> yeah, so um you know, I like to expose kids to the spider, you know, the little ones. We sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider song. That ain't so Itsy Bitsy. And this species never bites. That's why I, uh, okay. that's why I handle these. I don't like getting bit either. It's a rose hair tarantula okay. from uh, Chile. See, he or she have a stinger too? Oh, yeah. They have uh, fangs and a yeah, venom. Yeah, there's something coming out of the butt. That's the spinnerets. So oh. they can um, put those, she's putting web down on my fingers right now. Really? Yeah. Can you feel it? Oh yeah, you'll see okay. it. Spider web is the strongest natural fiber. You see that? Let me get it. I get to hold it right like that. All right, I got it. Let's see. <gasps> Wild. Did I get some? Oh yeah. Oh, you got a lot. I can't even see it. Yeah. There yeah, it I can is. see it from there. Wow. There's like eight strands there. Yeah, so spider silk, check it out. It's the strongest natural fiber on earth. This doesn't hurt her, it does it? No, look. Uh, she's... As she squirms. She could bite me, but she doesn't. Whee! Yeah, can you, they see that? All that I don't know if they web? can see it, but I can see it. So I scientists are trying to make artificial spider web, and then we For could what? get rid of plastic. <gasps> Things oh. would be lighter and stronger. It's like stronger than steel. Uh, wow. Spider web. Yeah. Well, yeah, because if it's got to hold on to a spider. Yeah, and the tunnels and. Yeah. Yeah. So there's. And again, you know, Cat in the Hat teaches us about spiders and their eight eyes. Yep, eight. Now, eight or they, six. Okay, and when they change webs, you know, when they move, do they really eat their silk? You know, some species probably do. Um, most of the tarantulas. That's what the cat in the hat told me. Exactly. And the cat in the hat knows a lot about that. <laughs> they do, you know. There, but there's always an exception, oh, especially with nature. It's 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 so diverse. Darwin was right. Yeah. Here we go. So you want maybe I'll take out an alligator. You want to see? Okay. I love alligators. You know, I've always wanted alligators. Now, then, is it really true, or is it like an urban myth about alligators being found in sewers? It's, it's probably a myth, but um, what happened was New Hampshire started to sell baby alligators in Rhode Island. Remember a couple of years back, people oh, were finding... Okay. Um, now, weren't there something found like along the Charles River and JP yes, or Yes, exactly. A lot of the local ponds, people were letting oh, them go, okay. and they would never make the winter, because if they could survive, they'd already be here. Now, that's probably like three-year-old? Yeah, this one is like uh, four, and a half, four and a half, probably. Okay. You know, so Thank somebody you for had having <laughs> him or her face that way. Yeah, but he's looking at him. He's just he's such a nice little alligator. The longer I have them, the nicer they get. When they're babies, they're they're flipping out. They're trying to smack me with the tail. Oh right? wow! Yeah, that thing. There's <laughs> a reason why they make shoes out of it. Hey you. Now, do they have like a third eyelid? Because I saw him blink a couple of times. Yes, they have uh, amazing eyes. Um, a, a see-through uh, membrane covers their eyes. But oh. when I do that, you'll see the 
membranes oh, all yeah, across. Yeah. And then their ears right here. Okay. And they can close their ear when they go underwater. All right. And you see all these little dots on his jaw? Yeah. They can feel pressure waves of an animal splashing. Ah. And he can close his nostrils when he goes underwater. Yeah, because getting water up your nose and is then, Yeah, let me open nasty. up his mouth. So he'll lose his teeth throughout many times over. Someday his, his teeth might be as big as my fingers. Oh, yeah. And then he goes and stays with your cousin Bubba. Yeah, we, we Uncle Toby. Uncle Toby. <laughs> I got a lot of family down in West Palm. I do. <laughs> Tina, I even have a cousin Vinny down there. A cousin Vinny. There you go. Send him to cousin Vinny. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the throat? Now, how he, just, you know, I'm thinking like how about. How does he swallow, huh? Yeah. See, how the, does he swallow? You know, when they open their mouth, the tongue covers their throat. See that? Oh, uh, wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is pretty cool. So he can open it underwater. Yeah. It's like the back of his mouth is like Beaker from, <laughs> from Muppet Show. Now, I'm just, you know, it's, it's, stream of consciousness here. When I lived in Florida, they yeah. were always telling you, don't feed the gators. Yes. Don't feed the don't gators. Don't feed the gators. Now, do you ever find, and you know, you just mentioned that he's a real friendly guy. Do you ever find that there's a disconnect because people see your animals and they think they're really friendly and don't make the connection to wild animals? No, because I just, if I always say, you know, that, uh, you know, and, and usually I'm not this relaxed around the kids with the alligator. I'm like, oh, I'm, I have know. feeling back in my arm. <laughs> Peanut decided to wake up. But uh, I, I tell them, you know, if you see an animal outside, mm -hmm. it thinks you're going to eat it if you grab it. And that's why snakes bite people. It's because oh. people grab them. If you leave a snake alone, it won't chase you or bite you. Yeah. So okay. I, I tell the kids to leave the wildlife alone because... It will view them as a predator. And I tell the kids, I said, even though you're little, you know, you're bigger. You're bigger than they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, and they, you're louder. Yeah, they <laughs> see you coming, you know, wearing your bright color clothes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> now I'm just noticing Peanut has a very narrow face. Yes, that's characteristic to the female. The males really? have a bigger head okay. and will sometimes be 10 pounds larger. Okay. And they're actually in the muskid family, which makes okay. them like weasels. Oh, okay. So she's related to fisher cats, mm -hmm. otters. Oh, they're nasty. Yeah. The wolverine is the, the, the largest of the muskids. Okay. Well, and with the nails, I'm not surprised they're related yep. to wolverine because I've been watching my Marvel comics. Wolverine's got nasty nails. Yeah, I like the wolverine. Huh. So, back with Al? Al, yeah. With Al. Where does he stay at your house? Because, yeah. like, right now he's only probably four and a half feet. Exactly. Five feet, four and a half. We have an but indoor pond. He's going to get to be, like, 14 feet. Yeah, this is as big as we keep him. Okay, what happens after that? They, they go down to Florida. They go to, to West Palm. There's... Okay. Um, can he be released in the wild, or does he go to like I think he goes. Uh, he goes. He goes to the farm, and they, oh, okay. you know, they raise him up and they breed him there. And uh, now Stone Zoo just has American alligators. They just opened an exhibit cool. back in May. I, I think. love the Stone Zoo. Stone. If they need a curator, <laughs> <laughs> if they're hiring. Yeah. Um, so instead of shipping Al down to Florida, could I would you, like, bring him to the Stone Zoo in yeah. a heartbeat. But you know, so many people them. have these things. Really? Like I have 13. <sighs> yeah, having an apartment in New York City is not conducive to having an alligator. There was a pet. guy in Salisbury had five alligators. So you're like, you'd think one would be enough. <laughs> even though they're, he, he wants had, nice shoes, no. So what happened, they start to grow. Mm -hmm. And now people are like, we can't keep, because now I have a real life and a job and, you know, a, a wife and a family. And it's taking family. up my living room. <laughs> and uh, so they call me and ask me if, if, if I'll take the alligator. You so know? what is the lifespan of an alligator? It can be 100 years. can be that long. Yeah. Wow. And they can grow 1,000 pounds. They can get bigger than 14 feet. Okay. You know, Gatorland in Florida used to have, okay. like, giant. Mm. 
Okay, I have not been exposed to anybody greater than 14 feet for a gator. Well, that's huge, yeah. Because that's pretty, that is a pretty big gator. That's a big gator. That's a big guy. You know, that's probably an 80 year old gator. Now, back to gators, you know, I always thought like, Alligators were North American and crocodiles were like South American, but there are some North American crocodiles. Yes, aren't there? the American crocodile. Is it like a freshwater saltwater thing? Yes, or? it can it can live in the same water as the alligator, but a lot of these crocodiles you'll see in say if you went to Jamaica okay. or Cuba or you were off the coast of Venezuela, okay. at one of the you could be snorkeling on a reef, and there's a, a crocodile like big crocodile. Yeah, I'd be freaking out. Yeah, so you don't go to the, the wild places unless you're, you know, you're, uh, you're ready. You, you got somebody with you. All right, who's in there? This is Fluffy. Come here, Fluffy. Do you need to get out to get Fluffy? Yeah, I'm gonna grab her. There, come here you. I got gotcha. you. That's the wrong end of Fluffy. Yeah. Or maybe that's the wrong end of Fluffy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so Fluffy is huge. Yeah, she's a, about a six-year-old common boa. Uh, these. Okay, all that's running through my head right now is my daughter's preschool. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. Yeah, yeah, I have preschoolers hold her sometimes. We. She starts off the size of a pencil. She feels like plastic. Yeah, these are those scales are are uh, are, um, are keratin. Like the, like really? your fingernail. She, she almost felt, she felt. Wet? Either, no, well, no, but she feels different than the corn snakes. Yeah. Why is that? Well, just probably by the way like their scales are or? designed. Oh, okay. You know, you have a smaller, maybe this is a smoother. Oh, okay. But yeah. And her, her scales underneath are different. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like they're, bigger. They're bigger for, for gripping. Those are called scoots. Okay. Helps them scoot along. Hence the name. <laughs> now, how often do they like shed or molt or yeah, lose their skin? Yeah, great questions. Uh, they actually uh, will shed about every two or three months. That frequently? Yes. Wow. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. We feed them once a week, once every two weeks, but they can go months without food. You feed them like a raccoon? That, this like will huge. eat full size, this will eat a chicken or a rabbit. I feed it frozen rats. Does it rats. have to be live? No. Okay. Never live because, Never live. I mean, you. Because that would be like cruel to the dinner. Exactly. And a snake can get bit really bad by a rat if it doesn't kill it. Uh, so they have to strike the rat just right. They got to wrap it. I think I see it. like the detachable jaws. It looks like the mouth goes way back here. Yeah, the um, even the teeth uh, are elastic and they'll they'll stretch apart and the, the jaws dislocate. This could eat an animal. Yeah, this. Okay, you're getting a little all right. Yeah, yeah I'm a little nervous with she's that. She's okay. Tongue. She's okay. I can okay. tell she's all right. Okay. But you, yeah, she might be fine, but my blood pressure's going up a little bit. She can smell the uh, chinchilla. <laughs> she can smell us. She can smell your fear. Yeah, well, I think when people are scared, we act different. We're, we're you know, we yeah. start to get jumpy, and, yeah. and I think animals see that, and it, it makes them nervous. So, speaking of getting nervous, what happens if you like go to some, you know, go to a school or go to a nursing home or go to a birthday party or something, sure. and the kids freak out. Yeah, you know. Um, or your audience. No. That's why when I when I do my show, I always start with the bunny, uh, and I were, the and then chinchilla. the chinchilla, and then we take out the turtle and the frogs, <laughs> and then we get into so the, the lizard and the bugs and uh, the snakes, and, okay. and you know it's how I, I'm presenting them. Yeah. If I was nervous, like with the snake, and yeah. you would be scared. But yeah. when they see that I'm comfortable like this, and that, yeah. oh, okay. he's just reaching in and picking that thing up, and they're like, oh. And I say, yeah, you know, this is how, you know, if you're nice to animals, then they'll learn that you're not gonna hurt them. And no, I don't wanna sneak up on him, but his mouth looks like it opens all the way back to there. Yeah, she, she could eat this one. To eat a chicken. Oh, yeah. Or a turducken or whatever. She, um. They how do you keep fast. all of these names straight? I know they're your pets, but yeah, you, you know. how many animals do you have? Like, well, not here, but like at your yeah. house. We, we your have a small farm, farm. and uh, we have about 200 animals. 
Okay. You know, most sea animals are small creatures like little frogs and lizards and And they're it, all animal rescue? They're they're so, I would say ninety five percent. But they're like domesticated rescue. They're not like wild animal yeah. rescue. Do you know back in the day, pet stores when we were selling pets, mm -hmm. all the exotics were caught in the wild. Now, 25 years later, mm -hmm. you can't get wild caught animals. Everything is bred in captivity. Mm -hmm. They're breeding scorpions and spiders and lizards. I and didn't think there'd be a market that big enough to make it work. There, there is. There's chinchilla farms. There's skunk farms. Mm -hmm. There's um, but yeah, you know, it, it's, uh, people do oh, it because they... Your microphone's like floating. Yeah, people do it because they love it. It's really not a money thing. Okay. I, I tell the kids, you know, it's, it's fun, the pets too, but they go to the bathroom. And, you know, it's a lot of work. Can you like litter train a skunk? Yeah, I had one, uh, Penelope, living in my house for 15 years. And she would go in a pan on paper. And then okay. she'd fold the paper up. She'd fold the paper? Yeah. And uh, so we would, you know, we were loving her. She just passed last summer. Oh. And this is Mika, my flying squirrel. I raised from a little pinky. Cause, uh, now, was she born in captivity as well? Yeah, she was born on our farm. Oh, OK. And I rescued flying squirrels way back. and. Um, they really take to me for some reason because they like nuts and uh, yeah. Ha 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 ha! I got that. I got that. So. Uh, Can you find her in there? Yeah, I train them so they love me. So if they're scared, they'll come to me instead of run away because they're so fast. Oh, okay. And this is, this is a little Mika. It's a southern flying squirrel. And is that about as big as she's gonna this get? This is full Whoa. grown. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why your microphone became detached. <laughs> All right, here she is. She is. Yeah. So she's nocturnal, and yes, but she's got huge eyes, and she's also really soft too. She's about as soft oh, as the chinchilla. Yeah. And it's and her a cousin. Is, her, very, her tail is very yeah, flat. Yeah, she's got a tail like a feather. Look at this. She's gonna jump again. Yeah. Come here, in my pocket. Come here, come here. Oh, there, there we she go. Is. She's in the pocket. I got her. I got her. Oh, ah. <laughs> Here, here. here, you hold her, oh, and she'll okay. fly from you to me, because she loves me, right? Okay. Come on, Mika. See? Whee! So I have the kids doing that. And there and she then goes. I get her going across the so room. I should have hold her, held her back here yeah, and see how here. far she could fly. <laughs> They're like, that's not a real one. Come here. <laughs> see, she goes right in the middle of my back. Where you can't reach, because she knows can't you can't get reach. Her. Come on. So, okay, you mentioned that, you know, you, you train them to appreciate you and love you, so then when they freak out, they go to you. Have you ever lost animals? Do they escape? I mean... It, it could happen. Oh, yeah, okay. we do outside shows, and, um, yeah, a flying squirrel could easily run away. Okay. You know, it, it hasn't happened, but you've s at some shows, the kids have gotten an extra show okay. watching me... Uh, chase Leave the, the breadcrumbs and the gators fish. are fast oh yeah they are yeah and even a, like a baby iguana hits the ground you know i love iguanas they kind of just like spurt yeah. don't they come here oh. <laughs> yeah they uh they just have <laughs> tremendous <laughs> uh explosive don't uh, lean back uh, yeah. yeah i get her i get her come here you she's afraid of the lights she loves me huh she loves that shirt, apparently. Yeah. All right, I got you. Come here. She's. Where are you? Where'd she go? And this is this side. I got you. Okay. It's a good thing we have somebody doing audio tonight because they're probably, you know. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Camouflage. That's right. So yeah. So what happens when they now? Okay, let's back up a little bit on your farm. Yes. Do they live in cages, or is it just like a free range? Some of the creatures are in cages, and some are um, kind of loose. Like I have, uh, I have a shed with an outdoor run that the skunks live in. Okay. Um, and I keep uh, five females together. 
Okay. And then I have some other little sheds where I have the males. The bunnies are in hutches. Um, the uh, tortoises are kind of loose, you know, they're in like a, um, a paddock kind of okay. area. And uh, the gators have an indoor pond and my birds are loose. And they climb and they okay. chew everything and destroy it. Now, with the birds, do you have to like trim their feathers so they I don't? I trim one of the wings like, so they don't fly. Far away? Okay. Yeah, and and their nails all the time. Okay. A lot of a lot of that. And now, does it take more than one person to trim their nails? Because I'm like thinking you got to be real good to do it by yourself. Okay. Because yeah. I'm like we have two cats at home and we trim their nails and it's yeah. like I'm responsible for holding the cat. <laughs> yeah, you're not uh, going anywhere. We uh, we roll them in a towel. So okay. we make a burrito, we call it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you, you get their little claws sticking out and they're, you can really get them. All right, I got gotcha. you. Somebody really, maybe somebody should go back in the cage. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, there you go. So uh, I have some tree frogs you want to see? Now, back oh, it up a little bit. Sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the tree frogs, in a but I'm just thinking, you know, pets and you know you mentioned the female skunks separate from the male skunks yeah do you have to spay or neuter any of these uh, creatures some of our or do you not in does it depend on species because i'm trying to figure out how you would you know spay a turtle yeah you it, it can be done uh with the reptiles but mostly it's done with mammals okay and and a lot of times it's a health issue you know the, the males tend to okay. do survive better if they're if they're neutered okay i'm also yeah. thinking you know territorial they might get into you know yeah, we, we're better off just keeping everything separate oh, in okay. separate cages oh, um, okay. i think um if we were in an overcrowded situation and you say you had multiple animals in the Hi, same Dean, cage i have seven gators at my house and they're getting too big for my bathtub yeah, yeah. and next thing you know you got your pets fighting each other and it can they can seriously get injured, right? And then you're, Burlington's Wild Kingdom. Then yeah. you're cleaning wounds. You're giving them antibiotics. Oh. You know, we already do some of that. Our, you know, we do a lot of first aid. We do our oh. wormings. We do. Now, where do you find out? You know, do you have to have like training? Yeah, you know, and like licensing. And we're licensed. We're federally licensed. Okay. Licensed by the state. Um, but the the info. You know, except up to recently, we would have to hunt in books, and now you have Google. Mm. So, and, and you can click right on into a university, you know, or a study mm -hmm. and, okay. and find the best info. You know, but there's, there's definitely times you need to see a vet. Oh, yeah. You know. Now, do you have a vet on staff, or do we, you have... We did, and um, okay. he's a great vet. He, um, he's but now you just call in charge of Novartis now. Oh, wow. So, yeah, okay. he does their lab animals. Okay. And we used to do work with uh, Tufts and uh, MIT would do our, our work. And then okay. um, I love uh, Danvers Animal Hospital, Saugus Animal. They're, they're up near me. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, the vets are great because vets work with dogs and cats. Yeah. So when they see me coming, they're like, oh, a turtle, wow, you know, you made my week, you know. An alligator that <laughs> oh, needs dental work. Yeah, anything else, uh, uh, yeah. Now, does it take special training? Do you have to be sel more, more selective in finding a veterinarian who knows how to care after care? You really should, and, and you can see the problem with trying to educate the general public to mm -hmm. take on an exotic pet. Yeah. You know? Because that's what I used to do when I had the pet stores. I would like telling you how to have a saltwater fish tank. Yeah. We could talk for hours, and then you would forget everything I told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, so this way, we're in control of the care. Okay. You know, we kind of supervise the interaction. We do a, a cute little show. You know, they learn some facts, and it's educational. But really, I think the the, it's just the exposure, yeah. the enrichment of it, the, exposure the, itself the, the attitude change yeah. of, you know, something I was afraid of, now, I, now I'm so in I love with. So I am actually sitting next to a scorpion yeah. and I'm not freaking out. My blood pressure has returned to normal levels. Because the fear of the unknown. You're like, can that thing crawl up the wall and open the top and get me? And is it going to jump on me? And you start to learn mm -hmm. when you're around them that, you know, the things your brain has been telling you aren't really accurate. Or you like. have a six-year-old come home and say, Mommy, I want a hedgehog for a pet. Yeah, you know, and... and now, 
You know what happens with hedgehogs and kids? They go to touch the thing and it spikes them. Yeah. And then they never want to touch it again. You know, unless you get like an animal yeah. keeper that doesn't care if their pets bite them. Yeah. Because a, a zookeeper doesn't. You now know, do they you have to like keep up on your rabies shots. I've and had stuff? rabies shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, I'm, I don't get bit that much. And, and most of the things are soap and water if you're ever okay. bit by or scratched by anything. But um, <laughs> now, with, you know, back to the licensing, you said you're federally licensed. Is it yeah. because of the number of animals you have or the kind of animals you have or both? I mean, what yeah, is the licensing? It, it's kind involved? of both. The, um, the, uh, in Massachusetts, there's mm -hmm. animals like a skunk, an alligator, okay. you can't own as pets. Oh, so they okay. license me and they say, well, Dean, you're showing them to school kids. You can have X amount of gators until they get so big, and then you've got to get rid of them. Okay. And they're fine with that. Okay. Now, the, the, the federal government. Uh, the U.S. government, they send a veterinarian in and um, they want to check us because we have mammals. So they're all about the warm-bloodedness. So if I had reptiles or birds, okay. I wouldn't have to be federally licensed. Oh, okay. But because we have a bunny, a chinchilla, a skunk. Well, they, you also have a dog too. So. Yeah, but we don't show the dog. So it's almost uh, whatever okay. we're so showing the like, public, which uh, I okay. think maybe diseases can be switched more. But okay. I think it's this, um, they, they know it's such a big thing that if they tried to license everybody, they couldn't enforce it, basically. Oh, okay. Um, so they just want to make sure I keep my trash good, my food good, you know, your sink area, your, okay. um, your pets have nice clean cages. They want to see your records, like we tell them, I brought the skunk to, you know, BCAT okay. TV today. They'd want to know that. Okay. They want to know your name, your I'm wanted by the federal government <laughs> because I pet a skunk. Yeah, so they track where we get the animals. Okay. So if, some, if you're bringing me a bunny, I okay. take all your information. I have to put that on file. If I adopt out the bunny, then I have to, you know, so it's okay. a lot of. So you do animal adoptions, so it's not yeah. just an educational. Yeah, that's just kind of something that. So the nature of the biz happens, Okay. but we pay the bills by showing them, okay. by going to schools and birthdays, you know. Oh, okay. Like the adopt, like a chinchilla, I'll adopt it out for $25 okay. to a good home, because I, I can pick my homes when I adopt them, oh, okay. and when you're retail, you it's can. whoever has the money, yeah. and it's really not fair, you yeah. know. But now, with the licensing, is that something you have to go through annually, or is it a yep. five-year thing, or They're do they just do a surprise inspections every yep, three everything, months? Yep, everything. Every, all the above. Okay. And We're licensed kind of every year, and they inspect us every year. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said you had a staff of, like, seven or eight people. Yeah, right people. now. Yeah. What is the training that somebody had to go through in order to be an eligible employee for for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll take people with no experience, you know. Um, the, one of the, the top people in my company started off babysitting my, my son <laughs> and, now, and afraid of snakes and now babysitting she's... Babysitting your human child. And now she's doing shows, she's managing the office, she makes more than anybody else, wow. you know. But um, we usually have a staff member bring on the new guy and they, they tail him. Okay. And they help them. We work together and we Tail talk. Tail animals, I get, get it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to scale it, right? <laughs> but no, uh, so, you know, management of people is probably not my strongest part. Mm -hmm. So I, I just try to uh, uh, lead by example. We do a lot of hands-on training. You know, um, I, I, I would love my staff to know the scientific name of every animal, you know, but that's not the most important thing. It's just like to recognize if it's sick or if it needs food or mm -hmm. water or it's everything going good. And to be able to present it. Yeah, and you not know, show that fear. It, yeah, in a fun way in that fun makes way. it exciting and educational. Look, it's a boa constrictor. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah. And you can wear it as a boa. Yeah. So you have to like animals. Okay. You have to like kids. Yeah. You have to have not a, you know, you have to pick up a lot of mess. 
yeah. waste. Now, do you get like volunteers to come in? And we have a bunch of uh, group, different groups of kids uh, of uh, different abilities come in. High school kids a couple times a week. Get them to clean the cages. <laughs> they could, yeah, some of them do quite a great job. And uh, others come in just to get like a little breather, a mm -hmm. little, uh, we do a lot of that with the older kids, you know, a little pet therapy. Okay. You know, and. and uh, now, you know, with, with the volunteers and, you know, having yeah. 200 plus animals, got to cost a lot do you ever do like yeah. fundraisers or anything like uh, we uh, some people give us donations okay. we don't accurately we, we probably should we go after some grants we get some grant money okay. um, if we were what kind of things do people donate like because I can't imagine towels food being yeah food sometimes vegetables frozen chickens yeah frozen veggies frozen um, we get a lot we get um, you know uh, one woman will bring us new towels. Oh. So we rip them into rags and we either wash the rags or we just throw them away. Ooh. Saves a ton on paper towels. And oh, that's true. Yeah, so, and we, um, what other, do they donate? They donate their animals. They, they donate, donate all the equipment. Like they'll say, here's my lizard, and here's a but camera. here's the tank, the light, the did you, heater. Did you bring out Spike? Oh, no, the um, bearded dragon. Yeah, we had him out earlier. Yeah, we get a lot of these. Here he is. <laughs> there he is. Okay, Spike, you are actually the first dragon that has ever been on my show. Yes. He's and you're looking. sitting there going, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Whatever. There's He's got some. quite the nails. The ring finger is like the longest one. Yeah, it helps him climb these longer toes. And uh, this animal, these lizards are from Australia. And he's got like those his little ears. Yeah, little the little holes. Little hole there on the side. Now, does he do the tongue thing like snakes do? They they will sometimes, but um, these these lizards hunt more by uh, sight. When they see something oh, moving, okay. it triggers like a attack response. You know. Okay. Very interesting uh, lizards. They're usually um, very docile, even though they look kind of scary. Mm -hmm. They do a whole uh, threat display. If now, what does he look like when he's threatening? They'll um, does he they'll like turn their his... neck black, and then they kind of flare wow. out the sides of their the Yeah, spikes. that would be scary. He's and, like, Daddy, don't play with my face. And then they, they breathe in deep, so their, their body appears larger, kind of inflated. And then I'm they, a mean yeah. dragon. And they go, <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and then they run away because <laughs> they, they don't have they don't have teeth. They don't have teeth. They don't have teeth. What they, do they eat? They eat bugs, but their uh, their jawbone is is oh. is sharp enough that they can. Okay. Yeah. See, a lot, a lot of animals, if they bite a person, they they could actually hurt their mouth. You know, they're, they're made gum for... gum you. Yeah, they're made for eating bugs, not for eating fingers. He likes it right there. So nice moments. and warm. Now, earlier you were saying that he was, like, molting. Yeah, he's something. got it some... It looks like... Yeah, some, it looks like Some his... dry skin coming off right there. You could oh, you could wild. take that off. It's kind of fun. I don't want to hurt him. No. <laughs> if it's I falling... It. Yeah, if it's falling off, then it's falling off. We'll sometimes spray him with now, does water. Yeah, like a... Uh, no, lizards, a, a it seems snake? like they're, they're always in a constant shed, where snakes, it kind of comes off in one shot. This is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, that's uh, keratin. Looks like a honeycomb, almost. Yeah. All right. um, okay, now how long has, you know, backing up, how long has Curious Creatures been Curious Creatures? Since, like, uh, 1987. Really? Yeah. That's as old as Bee Cat. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, yeah, and you know. Uh, and, and that's when you started just with like the, the little pet tiny pet shop, shop animals. Little little pet shop in Beverly uh, oh, on okay. Rantoul Street, and it was in the old firehouse. Oh. And okay. I lived upstairs. Oh, cool. I it was cool, to do that. and that you know I was in my twenties, so I was having a good there time go. and making money and having my own business because. It's hard out there to get a job. Yeah. So you end up, I ended up, you know, 
painting houses and trying to create my own work one way or the other. And uh, yeah, the animal thing, I love it, you know. I've done a lot of different things, but I've been doing it. I'm not burnt from it yet, you know. <laughs> so it's been around for a while. Yeah. Where do you see it? You know, do you have a vision for like what do you want it to do in the next five or ten years? Do you want to? Yeah, just you know, the um, last year was the first year that we've hadn't gained and we actually lost. Like even though the economy was bad, oh, we were still okay. kind of doing okay. But um, this year, it went a lot slower. And um, for a while, I had a little zoo on Route One where you could Ooh. come, pay an admission, and see cool. all my pets. And uh, y you know. You have kids and things change, and we took a step back. We yeah. sold the zoo, oh, you know, the okay. building. Okay. And then we bought a farm. Oh, okay. So that's what we've been doing the last 10 years on the farm is just doing a lot of oh. off-road. I would love to open up an aquarium or a little zoo, you mm -hmm. know, or maybe the Stone Zoo would hire me, and I could uh, hint, hint, make hint. that mine. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, you know, that's what I would love to do. I, I'd, love, I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing. Okay. You know, I'm pretty satisfied with where we are. Yeah, all right. We, um, we have a couple franchises. Really? Yeah. I have one in Connecticut. Hmm. We've had a, in Florida. We just opened uh, somebody. Well, Florida's where all the alligators go to retire. Yeah, yeah we just had a, a, a company in Chicago want to be mm -hmm. uh, Curious Creatures. See, yeah. I, I, could, I could be selling this and franchising. But, um, you know, it's just like when I had the zoo. Okay. I mean, I had a staff of 25 people. Mm -hmm. So you end up yeah. being the people zoo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I like the kids. I like the animals, so. Now, do you have a favorite? Yes. I have a tortoise that I've had okay. since way back. And, and one of my parents I've had all that time. So wow. I've been loving them the longest. That's how I put it. And what is that tortoise's name? <laughs> That's Gus. 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 Gus, Gus. And he has a heart-shaped uh, birthmark really? on, on his shell, which I almost brought Gus tonight. How big is Gus? He's a, a different species. He's, uh, okay. he's about 35 pounds, and he's a red-foot tortoise. Oh, so he's, like, little. Well, he's well, pretty big. Like, okay. um, well, you said he's, she is, like, 90 pounds. Yes. So he's definitely smaller than her. Okay. Yeah, but it, it's wow. weird as if they get like another inch bigger, that's mm -hmm. another like 15 pounds, wow. you know, they, like a gator, you know. Uh, an oh, eight. yeah, because they go this way and this way. Exactly. That's, that's how, how you tell how long they are because based on the di di distance between their eyes. Exactly. So, so it's the same with, the, with everything. Do you know what? Uh, We're out of time. <laughs> of course. So we're going to have to have a sequel. And meet your emu. I know, and nobody got bit. Nobody got bit. Yeah, and no. And uh, nobody passed out. Nobody got. Uh, yeah, except for. Uh, you mm -hmm. I want to call you flower. Yeah, we have a flower. Yeah, That's okay. peanut. Oh. Peanut. So anyway, I do want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening, and I hope you enjoyed the menagerie that we had, and hopefully we will see you around town. Thanks, and have a great evening. Good night.